So folks, um, this is the portion of uh, today's event that is, that is mine to run. Um, so outside of hosting the Beacon um, uh, as part of our webinar series and, and my, my day job as Director of Community Engagement, um, I've been very involved with um, the work that Dominion Payroll has done around our uh, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Council. Um, and so, you know, in, when we were thinking about our year-end seminar, um, we thought to ourselves, you know, we always try to bring a little bit of value that maybe exists outside of, of ACA compliance or, um, you know, perhaps some of the payroll deadlines that are there. Um, in years past, we've talked about mindfulness and how to deal with stress as you, uh, you know, go through, you know, this hectic time of year. Um, and as we were looking at, at 2020 and what a year it's been, um, we recognize that, you know, the, the social justice movement that has been, um, you know, present in all of our minds um, is something that we really wanted to talk about. Um, you know, following the, the killing of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Amon Arbery um, and many, many others, um, we knew that this conversation was something that didn't exist um, wholly distinct from, from our workplace. Um, and it, it got to a place that was impossible to ignore and it wouldn't be right to ignore. Um, and so, you know, like many companies out there, we uh, sort of, we did some soul searching. We um, examined our policies. We looked at what, you know, what are our values and what are we doing to make sure that we're living those values? Um, you know, in, in that process, what we realized is that, you know, not through any bit of, of, of malice um, or ill will, but maybe from a place of comfort and complacency, um, we hadn't always been fully um, true to our values of, of diversity, of being a fully inclusive workforce, um, and that there was work that we could do. Um, and that, that work was something that, you know, we said, hey, like, the time is, is come and you know perhaps it's uh perhaps we're, we're late to the game perhaps um you know like so many people were having this conversation for the first time and while that's not great it's it's better late than never um and so you know we we really committed from from the top leadership down to to new hires um to to have these conversations to do this tough work and and the reason that we're talking about this today is that um while perhaps we have gotten um, every move perfectly right, um, we know that a lot of companies out there say, hey, you know, this is an important topic. This is something that I know is impacting um, my employees. This is impacting the community where I live and I work, um, but I don't know how to get started. I don't know what's the right step. And it, and, and it rightly can feel like intimidating. Um, it, it is a sensitive topic and it's something that does require having um, some tough conversations, doing some uncomfortable work. Um, and so what we thought was, you know, while we may not have all the answers, we certainly don't um, ascribe to saying that, that you know, here, here's a, an out of the box solution for every company out there. Um, but we have, um, we, we are proud of the work that we've done. And so um, what we wanted to do is just sort of tell you what our process has been like and and really just sort of comment um, and, and show you that, that it is possible um, to engage in this work. And, you know, it, it's, it's simple, it's not easy. And, you know, if we can provide a little bit of, of guidance on this, then, um, then you know, all the better. Um, really at the end of the day, you know, we believe very strongly that, that the great companies out there are ones that, that value the people that work there. They want people to bring their whole selves to work, that we are better than just the sum of our individual parts, and that we're better together. Um, if there's ever been a year where I've said that phrase, better together, at 2020, um, you know, that's, that's gonna ring in my ears for a long time. Um, and I wanna really reiterate that, uh, you know, there's a favorite phrase of mine that the, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, the second best time is today. Um, so, whether you've taken um, a, a couple steps into this world of DEI or none at all, or, or maybe you're well advanced in the game, um, you know, the, the second best time to get started is today. Um, and critically, I think that, 
this is a real leadership opportunity. Um, whether you're the business owner, your management, um, or you know, perhaps you know th this whole idea of of, of leading up, uh, managing up. This is an opportunity um, where the skills and uh, the acumen that perhaps makes somebody an excellent business owner, a great leader of people, um, you know, this this is sort of a level playing field. These conversations are are opportunities for folks to really express themselves. Um, and so in acknowledging that, that um, members of our community are really hurting right now, um, we, uh, we engaged with creating a, a diversity, equity, and inclusion council at Dominion Payroll. Um, and so I just wanted to share some of, uh, some of the, the tips and insights that, that we've gathered um, over the last several months. Um, I want to acknowledge um, Dr. Shana Cook, our VP of Human um, Capital. Uh, she's been instrumental in... Uh, in guiding these initiatives. Um, and, you know, I mean, sometimes it's just sending that calendar invite, but somebody's got to be on top of it. Um, and the, the number of folks in our company that have participated, it's, it's too many to, uh, to, to list right here. Um, but it, it truly has been a team effort across all five of our offices. It's been spectacular to see. Um, that level of engagement is awesome. And, and I sincerely mean it when, when everybody from the, the CEO um, to, I, I remember we had a, a new hire, um, Conley, who had been with the company a grand total of, I think, four days when he came to his first DEI meeting. Um, and so it really has been, um, you know, a, a robust and, and whole effort there. Um, critically, though, I think that it is really important um, as, as you and your company engage in this conversation, leadership has got to be a part of the conversation. Um, without that validation, without that support, um, you know, you, you may be able to, to push some initiatives forward, but uh, it's really critical to, uh, to engage ownership and leadership um, in these conversations. Um, so as, as I sort of think about the elements of, of what we did, um, there's two critical steps um, that I think have to happen before you can have, can you, before you can get to the, the initiative phase, the, the making of a plan. Um, and, and the first one is, is research, and, and the second one is, is respect. Um, so, you know, research, this is both a, an internal and an external thing, but it, it's, it's critical that um, you and your team develop the, the vocabulary. Um, for a lot of folks, you know, the words that you see on your screen right now, um, they're, they're not part of your everyday conversation. Um, sit down and, and I mean, this, it's, it's, you know, a quiet hour on Google, um, the number of resources that are out there. Um, but I think that it's really critical for folks to um, take a look at sort of what the accepted definitions of these, these items are. And this is far from a complete list. Um, but as you do your research, you'll see, you know, new items that are worth exploring. Um, take, take those accepted definitions and then think about them in terms of your company, your culture, the values that you have um, as, as a whole company, as a whole organization, and define them for yourselves um, and get to a place where, um, you know, you, you can use this vocabulary in a way that feels a little bit more comfortable. It, it doesn't have to be a foreign language in your mouth. Um, and then on the internal side of things, and this, this is a, the the, really the tough ask, and this is the, the, the tough work um, that, that we committed to, but um, you know, this is sort of the, the whole staring at yourself in the mirror part of, um, of this process, but doing that self-examination, taking a look at you know, what are your company values? Um, you know, is that something that you have painted on a wall but you don't really look at? Is it in a drawer somewhere? Or is it something that you live every day? Um, you know, internally, we, we looked at, at our core values community, fun, balance, um, integrity, to name a couple of them. And, and we realized, man, like, we really want to commit to diversity. And we went through the wordsmithing and the, the conversations. And we said, you know, we've got to figure out a way to, um, to incorporate, you know, a diversity statement into uh, both our hiring principles, um, our external communication. Um, and in that process, we also have to, to recognize that, um, you know, perhaps we haven't always, um, we haven't always been as diverse um, as, as we could be. And it really, you know, 
in that examination process, you say, um, all right, like these are our values. These are our aspirational goals. Um, and this is teeing you up for success when we get to that make a plan portion of all this. Um, I, I call the second step um, um, respect. You know, this, this is really where you think about your communications. You, you think about, you know, how to be compassionate um, around these tough conversations. You think about how to bring your authentic voice to that conversation. Um, this is really critical. Um, this is not a place for corporate jargon or sort of sanitized, um, you know, workshop language. This is a place um, you need to be intentional. You need to be um, thoughtful about the, uh, the way that you're going to talk about these topics because uh, these, are, these are personal. This is this humans lived experiences. Um, but I think that a lot of times folks say, you know, I'm terrified of sort of stepping in it. I'm scared of saying the wrong thing um, or, you know, feel, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to get out there and perhaps, you know, create more problems than, the, than they're already there. And that's, that's, that's normal. That is a normal thing to feel. Um, and there's really nothing wrong with that. Um, the thing that we have found is that when you lead with compassion um, and you lead with an authentic voice that says, hey, like, I'm engaging with this topic and I want, um, I want to understand your experience. I want to understand how our policies, our workplace, all of these things contribute to um, these feelings. Um, you'll find that there's, uh, there's forgiveness on all sides of this conversation. Um, there's, there's leeway. Um, you know, if you come in brash, you come in hot, um, or you come in assuming that you know everything, um, then, you know, just like any conversation, that's a recipe for disaster. Um, so really in this, um, you know, I think that this part of, of respect is really, it's, it's an opportunity to say out loud things that are, that are in your head, um, ask with, with respect. Um, and in this process, you need to make space um, at all levels of the company and make that space permanent. Um, none of this is a, a check the box um, kind of solution. Own your effort. Um, you're allowed to be proud that you're, you're having this work and you're allowed to celebrate the folks that are doing this work. Um, let people know, you know, let your, you know, the, the worst thing that could happen is you do a tremendous amount of work behind closed doors and nobody in your company knows that you're engaging in this research and in this process. Um, so, you know, I think that open dialogue is critical in making this uh, sort of thing successful. And so let everybody know um, that's, that's really, um, really important in this process. Um, I think it's really important to acknowledge that there may be a lot of discomfort um, from, you know, particularly managers and owners. They're used to, frankly, having the power in the room um, of being the ones that people look to for answers. Um, so, you know, acknowledge that too. Um, you know, there, there are folks out there that you, you can learn from everybody in your organization. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it's critical that everybody come to this table, uh, come to the you know, conversation table um, on an equal footing. Um, and there, there may be some discomfort in there, but I think that it's so worth it um, when you get uh, to the other side. Um, so really, you know, the, the key takeaway in the, the initial process is that research and this respect element, they set the tone of the conversation and they make space for the conversation to occur. That is so critical. Everything else hinges on folks knowing that it's, it's supported by leadership, that you know, the, the vocabulary is there to have these conversations and that there is a space that is, is, is safe, that is um, supported um, in order to engage in this difficult stuff. Um, lastly, you know, once, once you've gone through that, that sort of, it's, it's, it's a journey, it really is. Um, now, now is sort of the fun part. This is, this is where you get to make a plan. This is where initiatives um, live. And, you know, I'll tell you, you know, we formed, you know, it's a fully volunteer based DI, DEI council at Dominion Payroll. Um, participation, you know, it's, it's voluntary. It's, it's an hour out of folks week. Um, but we've been, you know, empowered by leadership to say, um, we're going to make changes to some of our policies. Um, and, you know, we've been empowered to um, take a look at, at hiring practices. You know, that's, that's a, a crucial thing. We've, um, our HR department is engaged in looking at, you know, uh, what's pay equity look like across our organization? 
Um, what are our hiring practices? What are our promotion practices? And you know, we've really started to unify around common practices for all of our offices so that folks are getting um, reviewed in an equitable way and that there aren't, um, you know, uh, there isn't any divergence, um, intentional or otherwise. Um, so that's, that's really crucial. Um, looking at your company culture, saying, hey, you know, what do we value? Um, you know, um, what, are, what are the things that, what, sorry. So when I think of company culture, I really, I think of um, a couple key elements, you know, who, who are our heroes? What do we celebrate? Um, who are our villains? You know, every, every culture has this. And, you know, what are the, the origin myths and the stories that we tell? And so incorporating DEI into, um, you know, who's being celebrated, who um, is being promoted, all of these things, it's, it's really critical um, to, to take um, a, a hard look at that. Um, lastly, you know, and there's, there's some really practical things that we've done. You know, we're looking at, at some of our vendor relationships and just saying, hey, like maybe instead of bringing Panera in for lunch, um, you know, is there a, a small woman or minority owned business that we could engage with? You know, it's, it's a simple change, um, but it's something where, you know, these little changes, they all add up to quite a bit. Um, another program that we've done that I I've, I've personally really loved is that um, we looked at celebrations and, and we sort of said, hey, you know what, there are so many opportunities throughout the calendar year to engage in, in learning, you know, and this is, this is sort of personal development stuff, but, it, but also so crucial to represent all different cultures and experiences and backgrounds. And so, you know, we started with a week that was focused on, um, that focused on uh, Nelson Mandela and apartheid in South Africa. We're currently doing a, a week focused on Native American experience. Um, we've done one on Jewish heritage and culture. Um, we celebrated coming out day in October um, for our LGBTQ allies, employees, and friends. Um, there's so many opportunities to, um, to bring this work within the walls of your organization and they're fun, they're engaging. Um, the, the results have been so positive. Um, so, you know, I, everything that I've just described is, is the work that we're doing at Dominion Payroll. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's, it's, it's perfectly suited to your business. But like I said at the beginning, um, the, best time, the second best time to plant that tree is today. And I would say, look at, look at the, the uniqueness of your business, look at um, opportunities that you have, and you will have employees that, that value it, um, that loyalty is crucial um, as you think, um, you know, about your relationship with employees. Um, I really do hope this presentation has given you just, you know, a little guidance or maybe spark some ideas on how you can constructively engage in this topic. Um, diversity, equity, and inclusion, it's not going anywhere. It um, is a shame that, you um, tragic events had to inspire this. Um, but I do believe in, in that power of hope that, uh, that, you know, out of tragedy, we can have better companies, we can have better communities, um, we can be better for this. Um, and, you know, as I said, the work, it, it is, it's simple, it's not easy. Um, but if you it, commit to putting in that tough work to research and respect, you're going to set the tone for the conversation, you're going to make a space for it. Um, and then, the last thing, just don't be afraid to take action. Um, the, the last thing you, your, your employees want to see is you, um, you know, being aware of these issues in our communities and, and doing nothing to try and move that needle. So I hope that you all feel empowered to do that and take something back to your work. Um, I know that it's, it's incredibly valuable and, uh, and, you know, any, um, Anything that, that I can do um, and, and that our DEI council could do, if you have questions, we are here to answer them. Um, my personal email address is kwilson at dominionpayroll.com. I'm happy to uh, engage and I don't have all the answers, but I'm happy to, uh, to talk through anything with folks. Um, with that being said, let's see, I'm trying to- Hey, Kevin, you have a couple questions out there. Do you wanna answer them now? I would love to. Okay, um, first, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. As an HR professional, when I engage with the staff members about DEI, I continue to hear fear of DEI because non-minorities feel like they lose something by including others. 
Any suggestions on how to address this issue? Sure. I mean, and that's that's a. Um, I mean, let me just say, I get it. You know, um, if you if you really boil down, you look at at, at humans as as an animal. Competition over resources is the most common reason for 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 fights. For the it's it's you know the reason we we create social structures it, it, at base. That's that's what we're doing. Um, and and I think that that's that's a really normal sort of animal reaction to thinking, hey, if somebody else has more, that probably means that I'm going to have less. And so I, I get it. I, and I think that the, the, the first step would be to say, I hear you. Um, I think that's crucial. Um, but then I, I immediately go to, you know, there's, and there's plenty of research on this. The more diverse your workplace is, the more different perspectives that you bring into conversations, the greater the productivity, the more innovative um, folks can be. Um, you know, th there is a net benefit to embracing these principles, and you know, I think that assuring folks that the intention of of, of bringing DEI principles into your workplace, assuring them, hey, this has nothing to do about putting, you know, a, a dominant group down. This is about bringing us all up together and that we'll be better together. I keep coming back to that phrase, but I, I think that that is the crucial um, uh, phrase to sort of hang your hat on in, in all this work. Um, so, you know, I think, I think that saying and acknowledging that, you know, all, all feelings are valid. Um, so, you know, you don't want to say, you know, no, that's, that's ridiculous and, and, and put someone down for having those thoughts, those legitimate fears. But really talk about um, and talk through, like you know, what what could possibly um, be taken away? You know, um, there are opportunities here for all. You know, we we bring more chairs to the table. Um, I hope that, that that sort of answered the question, um, and I'd be more than happy to uh, to dig into that a little bit more if you want to shoot me an email. Great. Okay, and the last one out here is, what surprised you the most when doing this type of work? Gosh, um, there've been a lot of, of surprises and you know what I'll, I'll tell you this this is what I, I, I think um, that has been so refreshing but also um, challenging it's emotional work um, there, there are tears involved you know it's hard to be had there are, are, are people who feel scared there are people who who for all the right reasons want to want to do great work um, the, the surprising thing has really been, you know, I, a lot of times I think we sort of have this classic view of work where it's, uh, you know, perhaps a little sterile. It's something where you, you, you come in, you, you, you make your widget and you, you go on with your day. Um, this, this work is about seeing the whole person, the whole human, the whole community, um, acknowledging history. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of emotion wrapped up in that. Um, and that's not always the easiest thing in the world, but man, um, when, when you get into it, um, it's, it's, it's great. It really is. Um, when you see um, folks from all walks of life um, feel acknowledged in their workspace, you see that, that, that relaxation that comes into the shoulders, you see that, that sense of, man, my employer sees all of me. Um, that's incredibly rewarding. Um, I, I think I, I just, I want to acknowledge um, just in this conversation that um, I am, I'm, far from an expert on these things. And I, I also want to acknowledge my, my, my white cisgendered maleness in this conversation. Um, I don't have all the right answers. And I think that if there is really one thing um, to, to walk away in all of this, and I say this to my, my sons all the time, um, God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. Use the ears more often. Um, you know, there's, um, you know, the, a lot happens, um, and this is what I've learned, and it's it's something that um, I really try to own every day. Is that I, I learn a lot when I shut my mouth, <laughs> and here I am talking for twenty minutes. Um, so, you know, I, I would really say that um, it's 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 such an engaging and and wonderful thing to do for your company, um, and and sincerely um, hope that this has been helpful.